You know, I grew up loving Charlie Chaplin films and Harold Lloyd hanging off the clock tower, and I love seeing the artist, of course, winning the Academy Award. So silent films now are, you know, are, are a big thing for me growing up. What were the challenges for you now, playing a character who loses his voice? Is that maybe part of the appeal? That was one of the appeal. That's yeah. one of the appeal. That was one of the things that was appealing uh, about the piece. I had never done anything where I, I didn't have to talk, and so many of the characters that I've played, that's the big chunk of it is that I'm running my mouth and fast talking and all that, so I thought, you know, it'd be a challenge to not speak. Venti triple shot latte. <laughs> Iced latte. <laughs> Extra milk. Newfound respect for the craft in a lot of ways? Or? Uh, you know, it's not really a newfound respect because I already had so much respect for those artists, you know, and what I did isn't really indicative of what they were doing because, you know, I, I'm just not speaking, but everybody else is speaking. And those movies were really, truly silent. Those guys had to be, you know, Harold Lloyd and Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. These guys are acrobats and they're mimes and, you know, it's a bunch of stuff going on. You know, you've done sketch comedy, stand-up comedy, big studio films. Has your relationship with comedy changed as you've gotten older? Do you still have the same sense of humor, you think, as when you I still started? have the same... Uh, sensibilities. I think your sense of humor, you know, broadens as you get older and you mature. You don't think, uh, you may not think the same things are funny, but for the most part you have sensibilities. My, my sensibilities are the same and, uh, and uh, I still laugh as much as I always laughed and it's still the same way around the house that it's always been. It's still a lot of laughing. One of the funniest scenes <laughs> in this film is when you're impersonating Michael Jackson. Did you ever do Michael for Michael? I know you guys are very close. I never did Michael for Michael. Because whenever you're around Michael, you were kind of like, even like I knew him for years and you never ever got used to that you were in the room with Michael Jackson. No. And the last thing you was going to do was start imitating him. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people imitate him. What's the key to getting Michael right? Because you, you did a good job. Hey, you know what? I'm the only person, only per I see a lot of people imitate Michael's dancing. The only person, the only time I've seen anyone imitate him, like do his voice is in Delirious by singing uh, She's Out of My Life. It kind of sounds, that's the only time anyone ever sounds like him, <laughs> ever. They always do a, a little weird soft talking voice and, you know, so make a say like, Toy, do a dance, but they never sing like him. Only one that sang like him. <laughs> what? With the pointing and the grunting. Just be here with me right now. You know you made me go. <laughs> I'm covering today for Global Grind, which is owned by Russell Simmons. Mm. We all know Russell as the yogi now, the vegan, but you've known now Russell. Now what is Global Grind? Is this some new shit, Russell? Yeah. You own, what uh, don't you own, Russell? What is Global Grind? Well, this is Russell Simmons' website that he owns, and, and we all work for Russell, so. Hey, Russell, well, this me and you do something. You remember your kind of business. You remember something. Russell back in the day when you guys first met? You guys worked together, of course. Nutty we worked Professor. on Nutty Professor, yes. Yeah. But Russell Simmons is an old uh, hero of mine. I reference him constantly when I'm talking about uh, all the overachievers in, uh, of, of my generation. You know, Russell Simmons and Barack Obama and Oprah Winfrey, uh, all the same generation. He's one of my uh, one of the heroes I reference. You know, you're one of my comedic heroes, Eddie. So many great characters over the years and. and what I find with your films is that they continue to be funny years later. Do you revisit some of those classic films that you've made? Do you watch them again? Or you if I'm flipping through the channels, you know, I'll stop and see if a movie would be like, I'll sit and watch a couple of scenes or something, and then I'll, you know, flip it. Mm -hmm. But I rarely will I sit and watch a whole movie. Yeah, do you you know, every now and then, one of my movie, a movie will come on, an old movie, and one of my daughters, my young daughters might not have seen one of my own movies, you know sit and watch an old movie with them for a little while. Yeah, I was going to ask you about introducing your work to your children and if yeah, you recently, make sure they watch something. Just, I'll put something on. I have a 10-year-old, Bella, and she hadn't seen The Golden Child a couple of months ago, and I put it on, and when it came on, she said, uh, like it came on, she was like, wait a minute, do you wear that hat? Do you, how long are you going to have on that hat? Remember I had that really weird leather hat? And she, I said, I wear that hat the whole movie. I don't want to watch this movie. I don't want to put, why, why? A hat, I can't watch that hat. And she wouldn't watch the movie because of that hat. Yeah, so I, I got to ask you, man. It almost happened this year. A lot of people are excited. Would it ever happen? Would you ever reconsider hosting the Academy Awards? Absolutely. What happened was uh, I was uh, part of the whole Brett, Brett Ratner production. Sure. I'd done, uh, I was doing Tower Heist with Brett Ratner 
and uh, he was going to produce the show. And on the set, he was telling me all these different things that he was going to do. He was really approaching it like a director, like I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Every problem that's a supposed problem that's a, what that what, you know, what the Oscars needs to do, he had everything. You know, oh, we're going to do this. It's going to come in that. There's going to be helicopters. And then there's going to be a fire, an explosion, and, I, and then you and then you come up out of the ground. I was like, wow, it's like this great movie, you know. And then when he wasn't going to be producing it, it was like I went along with him. But I would love to be uh, part of that. Some, one of the few things. Uh, in 30 years of in this business that I haven't done. And so many great comics have done it. It's like a cool thing to do. I'd love to, if, if they ever ask me again, I'd totally be open to it. Well said.